Hello everybody, happy Wednesday. I hope you're all having a really awesome week and that you're getting outside in nature to enjoy all the sunshine we've been having. Uh, thanks for joining us for another story time. Last week at story time we read a book about spring and we're going to continue on the spring theme a little bit this week. Uh, spring is also known as mud season, which a lot of people don't like because it's really kind of dirty and it gets our houses all messy and our clothes all messy and our shoes all messy. But I actually really like mud season. Um, the mud is really soft and squishy, or the earth, I guess, right now is really soft and squishy. And that is really, really great for animals leaving tracks behind in that soft and gooey mud. Um, and I really like to look for those animal tracks when I'm out on a walk with my dog or my husband. I also really like looking for animal scat on a hike. And if you don't know what scat is, you will soon find out in this book that we are about to read. Um, so the book is called Track That Scat, written by Lisa Morlock, and it actually comes with a warning. So we'll read that first, and then we'll dive right into the book. <clears throat> warning. Watch your step. To learn which animals live in your area, search for clues on the ground. If you look closely, you're bound to find footprints known as tracks. Every animal leaves behind a different set of tracks. These tracks are easy to see in mud or in snow. If you find tracks, there's probably scat close by. Scat, also known as poop, can be used to help identify an animal and what it eats. Whether you're playing in the backyard, exploring a city pond, or visiting a state park, Clues about the woodland creatures in this book may be right under your feet. And then it defines scat three different ways for us, and they're going to use each definition in this book, so you'll have to be paying close attention. The first meaning for the word scat is to go off quickly or to move fast. The second definition is animal poop. And the third definition is this type of jazz singing with nonsense syllables. So look as we read the book for those three definitions, or I should say listen maybe, for those three different ways that we can use the word scat. All right, here we go. Finn ties new boots on restless feet. Skit scat, says mom, do keep them neat. Sure enough, Finn says as she leaves home, but mom knows toes are made to roam. Finn yells as she flings wide the door. Come on, Skeeter, let's go explore. But what? That lazy hound won't go. Finn nudges him with a big heave ho. So this is her dog, Skeeter. So fancy free the two high tail, past pellets on the grassy trail, zigzagging tracks in broad V clumps. Whatever hurried through here jumps. With one trip slip, Finn's foot goes splat. Oh no, right into, any guesses? Rabbit scat. Eek, eek is all she has to say before she bunny hops away. We'll come back and read more about the, the scat and the tracks afterwards. Finn leaps across a winding creek. Now Skeeter's playing hide and seek. Finn looks around. What does she spy? A green grass paddy mixed with rye? Three toed web prints grouped together. Nearby floats a long tail feather. With one trap plop, Finn's foot goes splat. Oh no, she stepped in. What's your guess? Goose scat. Honk honk is all Finn has to say. She flaps her arms and flies away. Finn lands upon a hollow log and yells, come on to that old dog. Five-toed tracks like handprints, see? A messy pile beneath the tree. A den, her hound plays show and smell. Dry leaves, fish bones, a walnut shell. With one trump stomp, Finn's foot goes splat. Oh no, right into, what do you think it is? Raccoon scat. Growl, growl, as all Finn has to say. Like a bandit, she steals away. Finn shuffles past another track. Toes form a line from front to back. 
a pinch of fur, a feather too, mystery seeds, and a tail of shrew. With one slid skid, fin's foot goes splat. Oh no, she stepped in. Kind of scatters it this time. She's not doing a great job keeping her, sh her new boots clean. Red fox scat. Snort snarl is all Finn has to say. And then she fox strats straight away. Finn bounds until she sees clawed ground with scratchy dig marks all around. Five oval toes form little paws and five clear points define front claws. A small black pile of smashed her legs, bumblebee wings, and spider legs. A rotten odor shuffles through. Finn says, hey Skeeter, is that you? Suddenly Skeeter rockets past. That dog has never gone so fast. A white striped streak, tail rising funk. Oh no, this scat belongs to... Skunk, P-U is all Finn has to say. Nose plug, she sprints to get away. Finn slows below a chickadee that's singing in a maple tree. The bird takes flight, Finn feels a splat. New boots are blotched by songbird scat. A twirl of black, a whitish ring. The only thing to do is... Sing! Chickadee dee dee, what a day! In brand new boots, she scats away. Fresh woodsy air, relaxing stroll. Oh, Finn's got nature in her soul, and on her soul, around her soul, beneath her soul. Ring-a-ling, mom sounds the bell. Time to go home, it's just as well. That dog is tired. His tail has drooped. Both Skeeter and Finn's boots are pooped. At bedtime, mom asks, what's all that? Well, shoo bop be bop that is scat. So we'll go back through and read more about some of the animals that we met in the book and learn how to recognize their tracks and their scat. So the first animal we met was an Eastern cottontail rabbit. It says, to follow a rabbit's tracks, let its hind legs lead you. Bounding at 15 miles per hour, front paws hit the ground as larger hind paws swing forward and land just ahead of the front ones. So you can see here, these are actually its front paws, but in its tracks, its back feet are in the front. The rabbit remains coiled up like a spring until it pushes off with powerful back legs. Momentarily, it's completely airborne. The rabbit's movement resembles what we do when playing leapfrog. Rabbits eat their own poop. When their scat comes out the first time, it's in soft, moist pellets. The animal eats these pellets. The second time, the pellets are dry and rounded with a flat side and found in piles or scattered as singles. Rabbits typically are silent animals, but they can growl, hiss, or make a purr-like sound. When in danger, rabbits have a squeal that can sound similar to a child's scream. That's pretty cool. After rabbit, we met the one who left a feather, which was goose. Most of you have probably seen Goose Scat, or maybe you've even stepped in Goose Scat, just like Finn did in our book. To find Canada goose tracks, look near the water. They have three toes connected by a web. Just like that. At the end of each toe is a wide, blunt claw. Their webbed feet make it easy for them to swim. A Canada goose produces one to three pounds of sausage-shaped sausage scat, that's very hard to say, every day. That's quite a bit of poop for a bird that weighs around 10 pounds. Geese are herbivores and eat water plants, grasses, and grains. Due to this diet, fresh goose scat is greenish gray and darkens over time. And it's very, very stinky. Geese honk when migrating, but they're also famous for hissing when something threatens them or their nests. So in a few weeks, we'll see a lot of geese and some of them will probably be hissing because they will have young and they'll be depending on nests from us. After Goose, we met the one who has very human-like hands and that was our raccoon friend. 
Raccoons have front paws that look like small hands and back paws that resemble feet with very long toes. Their paws end with a fat, round heel and their toes with long claws. Raccoons shuffle when they walk, scuffing the ground with their back feet. So you can see their hands and feet look a lot like ours. A raccoon makes its own toilet, called a latrine, close to its den. Raccoons also leave piles of scat on rocks and fallen logs. The scat is blackish brown with a reddish tint that informs a crumbly segmented cylinder with flat ends. Never pick up any scat, but especially not raccoon scat, as it often contains a dangerous roundworm parasite that can make people very sick. Raccoons make a calm, coo-like sound when upset. They chatter, snarl, and growl. They also hiss a warning and make a purr-like sound when they're content. After raccoon, we see tracks that maybe look a little bit like your dog's tracks, and we met fox. Um, when they walk, red foxes place one foot directly in front of the other, leaving a straight line of tracks. They walk this way because their chest cavity is very narrow. Each paw forms a small oval shape with four clawed toes, and their heel pads make a very broad V-shape. Red fox scat is about as thick as an adult's thumb and twice as long. In winter, their scat is often covered with the outer layer of fur tangled around small bones and may be rope-shaped, tapered, and segmented. In the summer, there may be seeds or green plant material present, and the scat will be crumbly with blunt ends. Red foxes are usually quiet, but their bark sounds similar to that of a yappy dog. And in danger, they let out a sharp shriek. They also growl and whine. So a lot like our dogs. Speaking of dogs. After um, our fox, we met somebody who is eating bumblebee wings and spider legs and turtle paws, which was, sh which was skunk. Skunks leave five-toed front and back prints. Each paw comes with a set of claws the skunk uses to dig up food. Their back prints are larger and set wider apart than their front prints because they walk with a waddle. If there's a small scat pile with insect wings, legs, and other parts sticking out, it was likely left by a skunk. Skunk scat narrows at one or both ends and is about three inches long. So I often find that skunk scat around our house and it's filled with um, bumblebees or honeybees. So if you find a scat filled with bees, it's probably a skunk. As far as a skunk is concerned, people should fear the rear. Before they spray, skunks usually hiss or snarl a warning. They'll do something like a headstand to align their bottoms with the enemy's face. Skunks can spray a target from 15 feet away. When they spray, a choking mist fills a 30-foot circle around the animal. We've had our encounters with skunks, and it's not fun. After skunk, we had a songbird that pooped on thin shoe. So the black-capped chickadees have three toes that face forward like tines of a fork and one toe that stretches straight back. But these tiny birds have virtually no detectable tracks. Sometimes you can see them in the snow in winter. Though. Hold two quarters in your hand, and you'll have an idea of how much a chickadee weighs. Yet this little songbird eats at almost every moment of the day, so it poops a lot. When fresh, its scat looks like a small round pile of pencil lead. Chickadees use lots of calls to talk to each other, but the easiest way to detect them is to listen for their chickadee dee dee sound that they make. Right now in the spring, we also hear them calling Phoebe, Phoebe, a lot. I think those were all the animals that we met in our book. So I hope that you learned something about animal tracks and scat today. Look for them when you're out on your hike. Um, spring is a really great time to look for scat too because it's one of the ways that some of our animals mark their territories, which is really important when they're trying to find mates and raise families in the spring. So they're doing a lot of territory marking and leaving scat in very prominent places, so it should be easy to find. I'll put some activities for you down in the comments below. Thanks for joining us for story time this week, and we hope to see you again next week. Bye!